Hi, welcome to Magic vs. Logic Sex, Love, and Relationship Advice for Generation Y. Which kind of looks like a vagina, I guess. Um, so what we do here is we do things a little bit differently in that I do give advice, but I do it from two perspectives, one from the head, one from the heart, and then you guys get to vote on which one you think that the questioner should follow. So it's like choose your own adventure, but love style for Generation Y. Ooh. But because, raise your hand if you cannot stand the new comment section on YouTube. They took away the top comments. So now if you go in the info box below, there is a clickable link to a poll, which is that is where we will now calculate and tally the results. That being said, let's go on to the question. This week's question comes from Sean, and it could not, and I mean not, be any more Generation Y if it had the word Tinder, Snapchat, and Instagram all in one in this. He wants to know, since he's broken up with his girlfriend and they had a long-term relationship, what he should do about all the residual evidence of their relationship. Should he go and delete Instagram photos? Should he delete Facebook posts? Should he delete certain statuses? When you break up with somebody in real life, how does that affect your online persona? We are not made wise by the recollection or obsession of our past, but by the responsibility for our future. What is the one thing that any woman can't stand her man or potentially thinking of maybe perhaps being her man doing other than staring dead in the breasts of a woman while she's sitting right there? Him staring at pictures of his ex or even remotely entertaining imagery of his ex. It is tacky. It is the ultimate red flag. No woman wants to be with a man who is caught up on his ex, especially because we know how other women work. You're going to put up a picture of me underneath the thousands of pictures of you and her, and the comments are going to be like, I miss your old relationship. What happened to the other girl? She had better hair. I like the way she did her makeup better. And furthermore, since you probably didn't take a shot of that time at SeaWorld where you almost dunked her face in the tank and she almost fed you to the sharks, you're gonna have this perfect image that's constantly gonna be in competition with our relationship that is not going to be perfect because no relationship is. So I don't wanna feel like at any given moment you're just gonna scroll through your feed and be like, <sighs> Yeah, I remember that time with Sally, so peaceful. And you don't wanna be reminded or linked with that person. What if they're doing some stuff that doesn't represent you anymore? So what's the point of still having that person's reputation affect your own? Just because you what? You're sentimental in a weird online Facebook way? No, it's just there are better ways to connect with the past rather than having it relived in a photo, which is infinite pictures. They, they tell a thousand words, and I, do, I don't want to hear two words about your ex, let alone a thousand. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying extradite and deport from planet Earth every individual who once was but now no longer is a part of your life. I'm saying that in the past what people did is when they broke up with somebody, they took their photos down from their locker or they removed them from their cubicles and they shoved it in this box that was under their bed and the box was broken and decrepit and unloved and it had a bunch of missing pieces and memories that no longer matter anymore and once every 50 years you glanced at them. And that is healthy. So without a doubt, when you break up with somebody, you also break up with the imagery of that person. So remove it from all your feeds. If there's group photos, sure, keep those up. You don't have to denounce you ever knew them, but it shouldn't be a constant reminder that you once knew them like that. We must welcome the future, remembering that soon it will be the past, and we must respect the past, remembering that it once was all that was humanly possible. If you became a vegetarian today, would you go back and delete all summer barbecue photos you've ever taken in your entire life? If you changed your major in school, would you burn all the books? At what point do we actually start to accept the fact that our online portfolios and platforms should reflect who we actually are as people and not just who we wish we would be at that current moment? I think there's something very sad about constantly editing your past, especially editing the people who were once very important to you out of it completely. Now, there's a really cool thing that Facebook is doing now where it's called year in review and if you click on it it shows all these really amazing posts or pictures or events that you did and had over the course of your lifetime now imagine if you went and edited that and so when you go back to look at it 20 years from now all it showed that you did was eat properly talk about your motivation and talk about jesus because that's the only thing you probably wouldn't be ashamed of years down the line 
giving people an opportunity to read you online is the whole point, I think, of having a social platform. And if you're the kind of person who just doesn't like anybody in your business and doesn't want, you don't want people to know who you dated or what you did or where you've been or what city that you just flew to, then I don't think that you should even include any pictures of people, period, on your social platform. The best pictures that we have from school are the ones where we look ridiculous, but we thought we looked so cool at the time. And those are telling parts of our individual fabric, the quilt that makes us up. And since we don't keep photo books anymore, social feeds are the closest thing that we have to reminiscing on things that once were very important to us. Now don't get me wrong, you can delete the pictures of you groping asses or of your tongues down each other's throat, but the other pictures, those nice moments, those group shots, even Christmases together, that's an important part of your past that shouldn't be forgotten by anybody. So here is the magic. Studies show that individuals who are at peace with their past and don't have certain individuals or experience they completely block out are more likely to have healthy relationships as well as goals for the future. So if you are an individual who has had a past and it has people in that past, you should be accepting of the fact that that is okay and the people who love you going forward should also be okay with that. Because if they're not, then they probably aren't okay with you as a person and the choices that you've made, in which case, Deuces! So now it's all up for you guys to decide. In the info box below, there is a clickable link to a poll which will help us decide which is the better option in this case, magic or logic. Furthermore, if you have some experience, some experience in this area, or you have some really insightful information, leave a long, juicy comment in the comment section below, and the best comments will be read out on next week's episode of Magic vs. Logic. And next week, yes, because we will be back next week. A lot of women I've talked to claim up and down they have orgasms on penetration alone. But why did I get the short end of the stick? The tip of the clitoris is similar to the head of the penis, except for the fact that it has double the nerve endings. Our sensuality is a wonderful, integral part of being a woman. It's not some dirty secret you should shove under your bed and hope that nobody ever sees or finds out about.